The world has just now turned 8 billion people who all call this little wonderful planet of ours, Earth, home. As we celebrate this great milestone, we've been having wonderful discussions around this world of 8 billion people and how we can make it a better place. I'm glad to be joined by the United Nations Resident Coordinator for Uganda, Susan Ngongi Namondo, to have a discussion about what this world of 8 billion looks like and what we can do to make it a better place. You're welcome. As we get started, let's talk about you as one of the 8 billion in this wonderful world of ours. What drives you? What drives your passion? I think my passion is driven by development progress, that we're able to grow economically, that we're able to develop socially, culturally. Um, I think one of the most impactful moments for me was when I was relatively young, I'd started working, and I went to, it was Western Upper Nile here in Sudan, and I saw the location and I thought, no, no. We have envisioned um, a world where such deprivation in terms of economic well-being, um, social well-being, social access to resources to some extent should not exist. So that's what drives me. Um, we're human beings. We envision um, um, a world and we have the capacities to put systems and processes in place to make sure that we all enjoy life. That's amazing. Um, obviously, this passion comes through quite clearly. If I was to ask you, in your individual capacity, what do you think you've been able to do to contribute to making the world a, a better place? I think the context has changed, quite frankly. There are too many young people who go through universities, so much resources are being spent to educate young people, and then they come back home and they're sharing the cassava, plantain, whatever that the household has. Um, I think we have to reflect in terms of development policies, this change. We cannot create, um, there are no jobs for the young people in Uganda uh, to, to, to go into, and that's pretty much for much of the continent. So we have to, in my view, help them create their own jobs. So that means creating some sort of ecosystem where young people can go and create businesses. Um, and that we're not fully there yet. We're still implementing the model of the world that worked for our parents. When most of our parents were educated, they walked into jobs. There were jobs there for them. It's begun changing in our generation. Definitely for those who are coming after us, that luxury is not there. There are no jobs for them to walk into. They have to make their own jobs. And we have to reflect that in the development policies that we set up. One of the SDGs, uh, SDG number four, focuses specifically on education. And we know that if we're going to be able to achieve our demographic dividend, we need to have a well-educated population. Um, how do we approach this particular issue of education or SDG four a little bit differently, in your opinion? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think while we've all, you know, the, the whole COVID years and the education system suffered significantly, um, one of the things we know Uganda for, outside of Uganda, is um, uh, education and the progress that had been made on education. Of course, now following COVID, the issues were not moving as fast or as far as maybe we want. Uh, there have been problems there. But overall, we have a relatively well-educated population. We should harness that, we should use that. Overall, the society is more free here than in many other places. So then access for people to be able to actually go forth and do things if they, can, if they have good ideas. Um, more resources, being a more open society, there are more companies, um, more partners of various natures um, here in the country that can be taken advantage. But you do make a good point. I think generally it's so easy to be negative, extremely easy to be negative. Um, um, we have to make, and of course there are challenges there, so one should not negate the challenges. But there has to be a greater effort for all of us to feel, look at the opportunities that are available to us and really seize those and run forth with them. You're originally from Cameroon, but you've also worked around the entire continent, Liberia, South Sudan, in Kenya, and all over the place. 
So you have quite a wonderful experience and exposure to the entire continent. Uh, so you are probably well placed to tell us what you think about the Ugandan experience as you have seen so far. If you had to think of a place or an area where you think we are doing well as Uganda, what do you think that would be? I've always been privileged to, to mostly work in spaces where I am helping to encourage a group of people, a group of agencies to move towards a particular direction in support of government's own vision and the people's own vision of where they want to go. So it's hard to pinpoint you know, what Susan Gongi has done. But I think one of the, one of the um, experiences, two experiences maybe, one was um, in Comoros, Quranic schools. Most of the children in Comoros, the parents felt very strongly that their children should have a Quranic education, pre the formal education. And that space was largely unregulated. To be able to work with the government to say, no, Quranic education is important. Culturally, that identity was very important for the parents. But how do we make sure that this comes into the mainstream of education? So as they are learning the Quran, they're also learning other skills that will be useful for them in the world of today. Um, small experience, but I'm very proud of that. And the second one was Ghana, where we're able to support, work with the government. Um, I was UNICEF at the time, but work with the government to support a cash transfer program that directly impacted the lives of young people because it makes a difference if you come from a really poor household that there are resources come in that allow you to be able to access education, allow you to be able to access better nutrition, etc. Really proud of those. But generally, what can I say? For me, development really is about a question, it's, it's public policy. Development is being able to harmonize the interests of a particular place, a community, a country, etc., and being able to then marshal the resources to implement those plans. So I'm really proud if in any small way, working with the United Nations, we're able to help government and help the people um, that the government exists to serve, to be able to help them implement that which they envision as the route they want to take in the future. Um, I mean, as you very well know, we have quite a very young population here in Uganda, uh, bulk of our young people, uh, the majority of the population. In terms of achieving our demographic dividend as a country, what do you see as being the biggest challenges that we face as a country? The biggest impediment, I think it's just recognizing that context has changed. The context is changing. Um, number one, mindset. Um, mindset, young people, um, not just in Uganda, but I think in many parts of the world. I'm from Cameroon, and a lot of times when I hear my elders talking about young people, it's almost like, God, that unruly group, um, almost like a threat. And we need to change that mindset because they are the majority. And if we don't make sure that we're thinking, sitting in their shoes somewhat, we will not be able to in fact, create that enabling, enabling environment for them, endangering our collective futures. So I think, number one, it's mindset, I think, in Uganda and everywhere else in the world. Um, number two, in terms of um, context, the government has amazing plans. And I think Uganda has done really, really well over the years, quite frankly, in terms of its development trajectory. Uganda has been moving. Progress is there. Um, um, so the context is just recognizing that oh, the population has been growing faster than perhaps we had realized, and therefore shifting our minds. And the last couple of years have been difficult for everybody development-wise. That which we thought was, was not. COVID was very, it's a very different world today, all of a sudden. So we have to pivot really quickly. So I would say mindset, recognizing that context has changed, and, and, and being able to pivot. Implementation is really key. So there are a number of really amazing social action um, um, funded programs, PDM, M Yoga, et cetera. But how do we make sure that we're implementing in the way that really drives them um, to, to, to achieve the potential that these programs have? Um, how are we making sure that we're monitoring so we never lose sight on whether or not we're making progress? Because if you're not making progress, it's not an exact science, right? It's not an exact science. So if you're not making progress, well, what are the corrective measures we need to take? 
I think development today is an iterative process. It's not defined. Many things change. We have new challenges. We had Ebola. It was a known challenge, but it's unexpected. We had COVID. That was unexpected. We have the war in Europe and the inflationary pressures. That was unexpected. So you're constantly having to navigate a world that is extremely uncertain. So we really need to be clear about how we measure whether or not we're making progress. So indeed, we can correct as we move along. So in this world of 8 billion, uh, we have a lot of young people. What sort of opportunities do you see for our young people in this world of uh, 80 billion? I think that's massively important. That's the gig economy, isn't it? That we have different gigs, little gigs here and there, and that we can add up and then be able to you know, um, have a pretty decent income. I think that's really important for many young people. Many can take advantage of that. But my concern is also on the equity side. Quite frankly, there are very few of our young people who can take those advantages. There are very few of our young people who can sit here in Uganda and be contributing to some product um, that is being developed in Malaysia, for instance. So I think we really have to think about the equity issues. We need to make sure that all of our young people have the basic education to be able to exist in the economy that um, the economy of today, um, but also have the infrastructure um, to be able to do that. That requires that you have decent internet access at a reasonable cost, etc. So yes, opportunities definitely to be seized, but on the equity side of things, there's still so many fundamentals that need to be in place. And then in terms of where you think we need to put some more focus maybe, what do you think needs to be an area of focus or investment for, for us as a country? First and foremost, I think, is jobs. And I think that's already part of what the government is, is really focused on. We need to help young people get jobs. And in our context, they will need to create their own jobs. There are no jobs for them to walk into. They need to make their own. So really creating that ecosystem um, that allows them to be able to make that, I think would be really important. And of course, you can't talk about quality jobs and not also talk about quality education. So skills, specific skills that really enable um, these young people to be able to make their own jobs in the different areas. Agriculture is a key area that has really been um, 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 focused and zeroed upon by the government, but the skills for that, is it there for the young people? Um, are, the, are, the, are the entrepreneurial opportunities for them to be able to take that, is it there for them? We really have to think, um, um, think about that. Um, more recently, and there are many areas, but more recently, um, Uganda was named by, was it CNN, as one of the most, um, what, one of the best places to... Let's harness that. Uh, the, the Pearl of Africa is so beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, um, but it's not marketed enough. It's really not marketed enough. Before I came to Uganda, quite frankly, I had no idea of the beauties that were in Uganda. I should have known that. And I have visited the country before on short missions. So I think we need to do more on marketing. For ourselves, in the country, we should use these resources more for our neighbors, for the entire continent, and for the entire world to come and visit the beauties here in Uganda. We might be talking about a world of eight billion, but this is a world that has now become completely interconnected. You hear the phrase global village being thrown around quite a lot. Um, what opportunities do you see for our young people in this borderless economy for eight billion people? In this world of 8 billion, I think where we are now is this um, digital space. Um, I think we're not harnessing it enough. Uh, the, the basics that need to be in place in our countries for young people to be really taking full advantage of that is not um, being taken enough. But I think that's an area of opportunity. So if we ensure that more people are skilled in that area, we can create. Huh? Um, M-Pesa that we all use now, digital money, except came from next door, came from Kenya. So we can definitely innovate. Now we just have to make sure that we have basic skills out there so people can really use them um, um, to further change this world that we're in and create the next one. 
I know how passionate you are about young people. Um, if you are to you know, look into this camera and tell our young people one thing, what one message would you want to send out to the young people of this country? Uh, well, I do concur first and foremost that Ugandans are extremely warm. Um, that's one of the beauties of living here. Um, I think for young people today, I would say please do your part. Of course, I recognize that it's very difficult. We all recognize that. Um, there are duties that we all have to play towards helping you live a better life. But there is no shortcutting. You have to do your own part. Um, somehow in the world of today, we feel like we can skip steps. That we're all going to wake up in the morning. We'll, 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 if we're lucky enough to have gone through school, we go through school. And then as soon as we're done, we'll be successful. Um, there's a lot of hard work that happens um, along the way. And I think we need to be more willing to do our own part. That's my message for young people. Please do your part. Ask for help, demand the help, but do your part. Susan Ngongi Namondo, United Nations Resident Coordinator in Uganda. We thank you so much for celebrating a world of 8 billion with us.